Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. And we have the full, complete patch 9.1 notes having been released. Uh, and as a result of that news, I wanted to go over my current thoughts of all of the healers moving into patch 9.1 and kind of go over the new things that they're getting, the new little toys that they're getting, where are they going to be situated in terms of power and performance, uh, and talk about the meta and what could possibly happen in patch 9.1. We've had a ton of interviews with developers as well, uh, and there's been a lot of focus that you need to pay attention to on both PvE and PvP to really take into consideration what could possibly happen to the healers uh, and just the game in general for patch 9.1. But regardless, I'm very excited about it. I like the direction uh, that the interviews have been going in. I really enjoyed the Brian Halinka and Venruki interview talking about making PvP more lethal. I'm hoping that this will lead to less emphasis of powerful cooldowns, more emphasis outside of cooldowns. We can see that evident in the changes to a lot of the specializations, like Havoc Demon Hunter and Mages getting more damage on their baseline abilities. And hopefully, as that progresses, the game will become more intense and more lethal. Uh, and that's what I'm really looking forward to in 9.1. But aside from that, we've got a lot to talk about here. So let's start ranking these healers. Coming up in the last place position, we're going to start from last to first. Uh, and I don't really think that this is going to come as a surprise to some. Maybe it will, considering how powerful this healer has been for some time. Uh, and that's going to be the Holy Paladin. Uh, and the main reason that I think the Holy Paladin is going to be in a, a struggle position for patch 9.1, specifically PvP, although these nerfs are generally, I, I think, targeted towards Paladin in Raid, maybe, maybe Mythic Plus as well, uh, you're going to see that the, the biggest nerf is all of your damage is getting nerfed, so 8% on all of your abilities. If you're Ashen Hollow, again, it's probably more PvE-oriented Paladins, but a 10% nerf to your Ashen Hollow damage, 10% additional damage to your Hammer of Wrath, 10% damage reduction on your big damage judgments, uh, and you've got a mana cost increase to Crusader Strike, you're going to have a longer cooldown on your Crusader Strike through the Crusader's Might Talent. So basically the offense... Um, of your kit is being reduced significantly and there is now more emphasis put on flash of light and this is likely to try and encourage you to use more than just holy light um, or even just instant cast holy generating ability so you're going to see flash of light getting buffed by 20 percent uh, and you're going to see lights grace and pvp reworked to now increase the healing of your flash of light uh, and but your holy light will now immediately stack 15 percent damage reduction rather than five percent five percent five percent but no bonus healing anymore uh, and as a result of this what i'm expecting to have happen is that paladins will struggle even more so with their mana uh, moving into patch 9.1 and I think this is also to try and put them in line for raids so that they're not just bringing the highest healing output as well as almost as much damage as the DPS that seems to be a main point of contention for healer balance in PvE and that's important to PvP because if your damage is getting nerfed in PvE it's also getting nerfed in PvP the one saving grace that paladins are getting although it's probably going to benefit rep paladin more than holy is the judgments of the pure honor talent where if you cast judgment uh, on an enemy it will cleanse one poison disease and magic effect most importantly the magic uh, that they have caused on allies within your aura so you could easily dispel polymorphs off your dps um, without having to use a dispel uh, although i'm not really expecting again this is probably coming as a surprise as well because it's been so long right that mages are, could be in a great spot there's a lot of uh, covenant abilities that reduce crowd control or reduce damage when you're stunned uh, or absorption effects that could negate the power of mages i think i believe that these are on the radar though for potential nerfs uh, and i, I kind of hope that they are there are a lot of kind of passive you dip low health here's the shield that's going to save you mechanics uh, those generally counteract the gameplay um, at least a fire mage which is just burning down a target as quickly as possible and then they've got to get through all these walls um, but we've seen paladin and fire mage for some time so maybe it would also just be nice to see a change in meta this talent could save it um, paladin's still going to be bringing in all of the strong immunity cooldowns if the meta shifts and kind of into this zerg run the healer down uh, with death knights having strangulate and stun i could easily see that happening uh, and paladin would 
potentially be one of the best heroes to deal with that if it's a fast-paced meta. If it ends up being dragged on fights, I think your mana is going to be the main problem um, to your longevity in these fights. Mana and survivability have been kind of the core staple of the game for a while uh, when the meta has been about just surviving. So if the meta doesn't change or become more lethal, I think that Paladin will be at the bottom. I think just as a result of all of these nerfs and the shifts into your flash of light means that you're gonna be open to more interrupts, spending more mana, and a lot of healers are just getting more exciting stuff. So Holy Paladin comes in at the number six slot for me on my healer list. Now let's move into number five, and we're gonna be looking at the Discipline Priest. This is one uh, where the main reason I think that it's coming in a little bit lower are nerfs to its radiance uh, in PvP. So the ultimate radiance talent is getting nerfed now to only be increased by 150%. You do still have the conduit that increases the healing of your radiance. Uh, and the main reason I think discipline could struggle is that it already had a tough time uh, with the melee cleaves like death knights death knights and demon hunters and ferals oh my all of these melee are getting stronger and stronger with more and more crowd control to lock down healers uh, and discipline could really struggle uh, to deal with that and your one main tool to do with that was the honor talent that's getting nerfed significantly the trade-off to that is a new honor talent called inner light and shadow uh, which while you're in inner light your healing spells cost 15 percent less mana and if you're in Inner Shadow, your damage and atonement healing is increased by 10%. However, you'll have a cooldown of six seconds to shift between these two different kind of modes. This could allow a very talented Disciplined Priest to elongate matches and maintain their mana and then shift for more high damage and intensity. But my main concern for Disciplined Priest would likely be survival. And we can see that Disciplined Priest was also the target of nerfs in PvE. For Discipline Priest, it's all it's been all about Spirit Shell, um, just being able to negate mechanics with massive absorption shields. Uh, so Spirit Shell will be getting nerfed in PvE. And as a side note, the Clear Mind Conduit is being nerfed by 25%. This is the one that allowed you to purge at a reduced mana cost, almost effectively free. So now it's not entirely free. Uh, and this means that other healers that are weaker to purge, like Druid and Monk, uh, will be less worried about you. Um, so if the game ends up being about warrior death knight monk or warrior death knight druid or something like that and it's just running down priests uh, and they're having struggle time trying to survive i could see it being really tough for them disciplined priests their one saving grace is that they can play jungle and feral hunter is likely to be very strong so it's it's really going to be a debate of what is the best healer to pair up with that feral uh and that hunter uh, and can feral hunter deal with the amount of damage and rushdown potential of the melee cleaves uh, with how much is being given to them so discipline priest for me in terms of its performance uh, holds it back on this list but i am very excited to try out the inner light and shadow talent to try and see because i've been maining discipline priest for the first season uh, to try and figure out if this allows me to get more damage out or allow me to maintain my mana and sort of outplay my opponents more actively rather than just like oh i'm out of mana there was nothing i could do about it uh, you are getting changes to improved master spell, uh, but whether or not you're going to want to be taking this, um, with again with mages and paladins having the main cooldowns to use master spell on, uh, not being that powerful likely, uh, it's not going to benefit you too much. And this is the main reason that Discipline Priest comes in a little bit lower. I also think the other healers uh, could, it, but it could be a, a bit of a debate, especially between this number four one uh, when we're moving forward here, and that's going to be the Restoration Shaman. I think that Restoration Shaman and Discipline Priest could easily trade positions um, because they both struggle with the same things, dealing with getting rushed down, uh, especially with Death Knights uh, or Rep Paladins or Swaps or just tons of damage. Uh, the main new honor talents coming in for Resto Shaman is going to be Unleash Shield, and this consumes your active elemental shield, unleashing it on your target. Lightning Shield will knock them away. Earth Shield will root them for three seconds. And Water Shield will summon a Whirlpool for six seconds, reducing damage and healing by 50% while they stand in it. So if you have Earth Shield on an ally and you have Water Shield, you could get them rooted inside of this Whirlpool. You could coordinate uh, this Whirlpool with roots from your allies or with a Death Knight to pull them into the Whirlpool. I'm imagining Windwalker Death Knight dropping this puddle on the ground, gripping everybody into the 50% healing reduction, keeping them in that spot. Uh, with root spams or stun locks and reducing their healing significantly while you just chunk them down uh, with massive damage. I think that's that's likely going to be the main usage of this. The lightning shield knock away, probably more 
useful to maybe enhancement uh, as all shamans are getting this so if enhancement wants to run away and it's getting attacked it can knock enemies away you could still utilize that defensively and maybe that will be important if it's just run down the healer uh, aggro games moving forward. But 50% healing reduction. This is the only healer in the game that can access that amount. I mean, it's, it's warrior other than that. And now maybe assassination rogue. So this is a very limited mechanic. And we all know that healing is very powerful, right? Especially on hybrids. So the ability to reduce it by 50% could allow restoration shamans to have a place in compositions that they're already strong in. So Demon Hunter, Death Knight, Windwalker, Death Death Knight, uh, these types of setups, maybe even Rhett Warrior, uh, and locking them down in this healing reduction could be a lot of fun. Another healing talent, which is not too exciting in my mind, it's basically just to try and make Healing Tide Totem relevant, which is Living Tide. Healing Tide's Totem cooldown is reduced by one and a half minutes, and it heals for 100% more each time it pulses. This could be a good emergency cooldown, especially again if the game is aggro and rushdown. So dropping this totem behind a pillar and then kiting and ghost ult to try and get away while it heals you and your team. Uh, it, it could be very important if the game is aggro. This, again, probably more going to be more useful in maybe a rated battleground setting. But if it is fast paced, I could see this talent getting some play. Uh, so you're not getting the most amount of toys. I think there's other healers that are getting more toys than this. Restoration Shaman has always been kind of just like middle of the pack. It's done well with Rhett Warrior. Um, it hasn't been able to break through that Paladin meta. But maybe now with those nerfs to Paladin, it has an opportunity to. So I think it's safe to put it still in the middle at the moment for 9.1. And I'm excited to see how this new Honor Talent to reduce healing plays out. Especially because healing is so important in PvP. Now, moving forward into our number three slot, we're going to be looking at the Restoration Druid. Restoration Druid is also getting a healing reduction mechanic through the talent High Winds. You will, after cycloning a target, you will now reduce their damage and healing by 30% to try and encourage more cyclone play. Will that ultimately be what druids end up doing, or will they end up just staying back at the pillar, sitting in bear form, being mana batteries, drinking, and resetting? I think it's more likely that druid will stay in the safe boat, uh, and I think that druid has a higher chance of being successful because it's already in a great spot at the moment. The healers that are competitive with it, or arguably better than it, uh, are getting brought down in power. Rest of druid's synergy with those melee cleave compositions and being able to sit at the pillar is already quite high. Um, so while it's not really getting too many new things the main thing with resto druid if you haven't played it yet in shadowlands is that it had a complete uh, unpruning effect at the start uh, and i think a lot of druids have been enjoying playing their druid in shadowlands now having a lot of the utility returned to it that was lost in previous expansions so maybe that's likely why it's not receiving the most amount of updates uh, here with 9.1, whereas the other healers that were kind of left behind or maybe neglected a bit more uh, are the ones that are getting a ton more new toys and stuff. But it's still a fantastic healer. I still love playing my Resto Druid. I think that with this healing reduction talent onto the Cyclone, it's going to help you out with maybe some Feral Druids or Rep Paladins, which could be very powerful. When you're cycloning them to stop them from attacking, they come out of that Cyclone, they try and go for a Word of Glory, it's going to be reduced. A lot of times you would Cyclone a, a hybrid at low health they would come out and they would just top themselves with one heal so this could go into an effect to sort of negate that uh, amount of healing and reward you more for landing cyclones and i like that i think encouraging cyclone on druid is going to be a good direction whether or not 30 percent ends up being enough or maybe it should last longer then four seconds uh, will kind of be yet to be seen. Uh, other than that, you're getting Keeper of the Grove, which is Tranquility's healing is increased by 100% and is unable to be interrupted. Again, trying to make these spells more relevant. Healing Tide and Tranquility are very powerful in Raid, which means that they're reduced in power when it comes to a small group of targets. These Honor Talents look to reverse that and make them more relevant on smaller amounts of targets. Uh, being able to sneak behind a pillar and go for a massive Tranquility while the enemy team is popping their cooldowns and avoid crowd, crowd control has always been a high level outplay mechanic for druid this will enable you to do that um, and potentially it, it could be tough with how many honor talents you have but i could see swapping it out for revitalize in some positions or not for mark of the wild if you're no longer needing mark of the wild uh, for honor talents so this could have that effect where you've got this massive heal that saves the whole team when you duck for cover it's something that i've actually been doing in tbc um, as well uh, and really enjoying doing that mechanic so trying that out in retail is going to be a lot of fun but i think that resto druid's kit is just 
it's just absolutely based god um you, you've got bear farm for survivability infinite mobility the option to go between offense and defense the ability to heal multiple targets uh, a recovery mechanic through nature swiftness defensive cooldowns with iron bark you fit in both melee and caster and melee caster healer you have the ability to dampen as well as play aggro it's going to be a solid healer and the only reason that i don't think it's number two or number one is because you're not really getting a ton of new toys to really make me super hyped about it but it is a good healer nonetheless uh, and i think that they've done a lot of good work with it just from the start of shadowlands for me i think it's a pacing thing when it comes to pvp and shadowlands it's just increasing the intensity lowering some of the damage from cooldowns increasing the damage outside of the cooldowns and shadowlands 9.1 could be absolutely fantastic and a lot of these new toys are definitely getting me excited and when we move forward here looking at number two i think you'll start to see why number two uh, healer for me is Holy Priest. Uh, and one of the main reasons that I think Holy Priest is going to start to be a lot stronger is the Sanctified Ground, which is Holy Word Sanctified, blesses the ground with divine light, causing all allies who stand within it to be immune to silence and interrupt effects. So you can drop immunity to interrupt circles. Uh, and this is important not only offensively, right? So if you want to try and synergize with Destro Locks and Elemental Shamans that are looking to be quite juicy, you can allow them to cast Chaos Bolts freely or Lava Bursts. But if you get tunneled down into the ground, if it ends up being a, just a Zerg Fest, uh, you'll be able to use this to cast. Uh, and the main thing is that I think you will need to cast a little bit more frequently because Miracle Worker is being nerfed, which means your Serenity's cooldown is not nearly as substantially reduced, only 20% reduced cooldown. This was your, your instant cast heal. I do like shifting the healing from the instant cast spells into the casted spells. Hopefully that's done equally across the board because when it's only targeted to some healers and not others or some DPS and not others, then the ones that got left out just end up being more powerful and taking their spots because instant unpreventable is the best form of anything that you can get in the game. So if it's all instant unpreventable, then everybody's going to be viable. But if only one or two and the other ones are left out, it's going to be a tough one. Um, so that did uh, hold Holy Priest back for me in terms of whether or not it's going to be a number one or number two. Spirit of the Redeemer is getting buffed. It's now going to be only a two-minute cooldown, not three minutes, and that lets you just activate your angel form, which means you'll be immune to crowd control and interrupts for eight seconds, uh, and you won't die by activating this ability. But by being on a two-minute cooldown, uh, you're going to be able to access this more readily and trade it for powerful offensive cooldowns. So in situations where maybe you would use a greater fade and then afterwards not have too many options, or maybe you burn through your guardian angel, this gives you another emergency survivability cooldown to deal with potentially just rundowns from enemy melee DPS. Uh, so this talent could likely see more play in those positions. Now, Symbols of Hope is being redesigned, so you'll bolster the morale of party and raid members within 40 yards, and they each recover 60 seconds of cooldown on a major defensive ability depending on the synergies of what specializations and what abilities they specifically get this could have huge ramifications i mean 60 seconds of cooldown uh, and they also regain 18% of their mana, so you'll be getting more mana. And Holy Priest was already doing quite well on mana. However, I don't think doing as well as what I would put in as the number one healer. Uh, and having now talked about Holy Priest, I think you're going to see why. Uh, number one for me, moving into patch 9.1, it's the only one left. It's not a surprise to you if you were keeping track, is going to be the Mistweaver Monk. Mistweaver Monk is getting damage buffs. 10% on Tiger Palm, 10% on Blackout Kick, 10% on Rising Sun Kick, 20% on Spinning Crit kick uh, so if you want to get into the fight and start dealing some damage you can although without way of the crane that might be a little bit challenging this is likely going to be benefiting you more in pve and again i think this is about trying to equalize them more so in pve but it also does benefit you in pvp bringing holy paladin damage down bringing mistweaver damage up uh, your mana costs are now being reduced as well on enveloping mists so you're going to enjoy a little bit more mana you're already really solid on mana and pvp anyways uh, that was definitely a strength of the mistweaver but you're regaining honor talents like Dematerialize. Not as crazy as the original version of this in Miss of Pandaria, but still quite good. Uh, whenever you get stunned, you take 30% less damage. And each second you remain stunned, this bonus reduces by 10%. So to, just, to discourage people from stunning you and pressing their hardest hitting attacks, this will encourage them to stun you, but give your team opportunities to help you out or give you opportunities to get away because Eminence, now the honor talent, will allow Transcendence Transfer to be used while stunned. So if you're out in the middle of the map, you bait people to stun you, you just portal out. It's all good. It's all good, dude. Um, also here with Peace Weaver, your revival's cooldown is reduced by 50%. Again, trying to encourage those AoE heals likely in PvP a little bit more. And provides immunity to magical damage and harmful effects. 
So I don't know if this is only dots or polymorphs, or if this will make you immune to polymorphs for two seconds if you revival. If it is, immunity to magic crowd control effects and not just damage over time effects or direct damage spells, that's quite insane. But it's also just an immunity. I got to sneeze. Ugh. Okay. No, I don't. All right, we're good. Uh, this is like a two-second ice block to magic. So being able to remove your entire team out of crowd control, run down somebody against these wizard cleaves, again, enabling the death knights, enabling the warriors, the feral druids, potentially. Mistweaver already slotted really well in that position. It struggled to deal with surviving when it was stunned. It now has damage reduction. It now has tools to escape. Its mana was always already amazing. It's getting a little bit of extra damage so it can get a bit more cheeky. And now it's going to have the ability to get its team in and get, get its team in and aggressive to be able to end games. So I, I think having reviewed all of the notes that Mistweaver is likely to be the number one healer. Uh, at least it's standing out for the number one position to me in patch 9.1. But let me know again in the comments down below what you think. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. Just let you know when my videos go live and it's absolutely free. If you'd like to follow along my gameplay live, twitch.tv slash uh, and I'll be streaming there every day. So other than that, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up the video. I will see you in the next one.